So that's how it went for nearly 30 years. With very little money, but tons of passion, a small group of volunteers calling themselves the Sea Shepherd Society managed to rid the world of untold number of environmental villains without killing or seriously injuring anyone in the process. Because we owned nothing of value, no one could sue us. And when the authorities confiscated our ships, they found themselves stuck with a giant turd they couldn't get rid of. In those days, we could get away with just about anything because we were protected by poverty. Then came Whale Wars, a TV series all about us. Whale Wars transformed Watson into a reality television star, the crew into actors, and the Sea Shepherd Society into a multi-million dollar corporation. We are no longer protected by poverty. Now it's a whole different game we play. We now had not just one or two shitty ships, but five, count them, five beautiful ships, each one luxurious by Sea Shepherd standards. We even had helicopters. Not one, but two, if you can believe it. Captain Watson, once a commander of a ship, was now Admiral Watson, commander of a small navy. Our crew of impoverished volunteers was now on payroll and well equipped with spiffy new gear. The TV show had something to say about who was on the ship and who was left on shore. On TV, looks matter, and we started looking like a modeling agency. It's a wonder they didn't have women dress in bikinis for the cameras. I spoke too soon. We were on our way to the Southern Ocean to deal with Japanese whaling in Antarctica. We were sailing through some of the roughest water in the world, but no one suffered for lack of comfort. It was like a Caribbean cruise. To pass the time on the long voyage south, we had poker tournaments, board games, polar bear dips in the frigid waters, theme parties, and birthday parties for everyone on board. Any excuse for a party. If the seas weren't rough enough, we'd fake it for the cameras. The first law of reality television is stick to the script. It isn't real, you know although the conditions outside are. Even the food, though still vegan, verged on delicious, all thanks to the lovely Laura, our vegan chef, and a food budget of a five-star restaurant. All this food, fun and games in the most remote place on the planet. It didn't seem real. Times were so good it sometimes became tough to remember the purpose of our voyage, which was to shut down Japanese whaling and look good doing it. After all, TV was paying our way.